This is Sean. Welcome back to the American Soccer Coach. This video is going to be about Uruguay and while why Uruguay, with three and a half million people roughly, has been such a international superpower compared to countries like Brazil, Argentina, and many countries in Europe that have a significantly higher population. Now, if you look at Uruguay, there's obviously several world-class players in the squad right now. Players like Luis Suarez, Edinson Cavani, um, Jimenez, Diego Godin, Lucas Torreira, and why these players have been able to be developed despite growing up in a country that only has a couple million people. The first thing that people need to know about in Uruguay is Uruguay, despite being such a small country, people really do leave, live and breathe the game. To the extent that, well, I think a lot of people would assume Brazilians are crazy about soccer, which they obviously are, Uruguay is on that same level of most, like so many kids grow up wanting to be the next Luis Suarez, for example. And so a lot of kids from the age of like four or five years old are playing soccer. So um, one thing is how popular the sport is. There's something called baby football, which is like the youngest years and how popular baby football is in Uruguay. And, um, you know, eventually what happens is a lot of these kids that play baby football end up joining the academies in Uruguay at a certain age. Academies like Nacional, um, academies like Peñarol, and academies like this um, and so that ba the popularity of baby football really has taken off and I mean it's been very popular in Uruguay for quite a while um, so that's one of the reasons the other reason is with only three and a half million people roughly it's a lot harder to miss a talent whereas if you're in a country like Brazil um, it's very easy for a player to go missing just because the country is so large and there's such an abundance of players um, you're more than likely going to be missing players that you know didn't have not every player from Brazil came from a top academy and a lot of that is because you have regions like Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro with so many people that not everybody's going to get seen or you have players that come from more rural or remote areas like Danny Alves for example that they don't get noticed until a later age um, so that's another reason. Diego Costa is another player like that in Brazil. Um, that's definitely more unlikely in Uruguay just because it's such a smaller country. Now, the other reason for this is the league in Uruguay um, is not the same level as like the leagues in Argentina or Brazil. So a club like Nacional or Peñarol are going to be more willing to give a player a debut at a young age, for example, say 16 or 17 years old, than a club in Brazil or Argentina are. Um, one, because there's significantly more talent in these teams because there's more financial uh, power in clubs like Flamenco or clubs like Boca Juniors or River Plate than there are the clubs in Uruguay. And the other thing is the academies in Uruguay, they really rely on the sale of young players, whether that's to Europe or places like Liga MX or MLS. Um, you know, you think about players like Diego Rossi at LAFC, but then you have many players that end up going the European route from Uruguay, and they often leave as teenagers rather than at 22 or 23 years old. Um, so that's another reason that these players, um, you know, and then you have guys, uh, for example, Rodrigo Bentancourt, uh, Federico Valverde, Real Madrid, that they establish themselves at very young at a very young age and you know those two players especially are kind of considered to be the future of the midfield of Uruguay uh, so that's just a couple of the reasons that I mean Uruguay has had such, so much success and if you look at it even before Cavani and Suarez you had you know the Uruguay teams of the, the 1900s massively successful teams as well that were punching above their weight um, and then I guess the final thing is you have this term Garacharua, right? Garacharua is kind of the fight, the mentality of people from Uruguay, the fight of the national team. And when you think a lot of these players, even guys like Cavani and Suarez that are forwards, they have this kind of fight to their game, this energy, this desire to win at all costs, kind of. And obviously that could be also applied to midfielders, players like Lucas Torreira, who are very short, but will fight and do anything they can to win the ball. Players like Diego Godin, one of the best center backs in the world when he was at his peak, Atletico Madrid, 
Jimenez from Atletico Madrid, another fantastic player, just this desire and this will to win. And so when you combine, you know, four or five world-class players in the squad and add guys that are, you know, talented players, maybe not the level of the Brazil squad, but guys um, that will do the job and, and will battle and will play in the team role and do the very best that they can, you end up having this massively successful team just because soccer is so ingrained in the, the culture in Uruguay and they have the coach Tavares who, you know, has really took Uruguay to a, a new level the last, whatever it's been, the last 10 or 15 years. Um, so that's a, that's mainly like the couple of reasons that soccer has taken off and has been so popular in Uruguay and why they've had so much success. A lot of it relies on the tradition and the history of soccer in the country. Uh, and also part of that is the development of the players at the youngest ages, uh, both in terms of mentality that starts at the youngest ages at baby football, uh, but also getting their debuts at a younger age than other countries such as Argentina or Brazil do. And being able to use these players um, at 16, 17, 18 years old, getting their debuts, and then eventually selling them off to larger leagues or bigger teams where they can make money off these players. Um, and then eventually the players, their, their stock continues to rise. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think about soccer in Uruguay. I think that, you know, despite Suarez and Cavani kind of being on a little bit on the decline because they're getting older, I think that the future is still going to be bright with the likes of Benton Core, with the likes of Fede Valverde, Torreira, and players like this. Thank you guys for watching.